Rigobert Song benches Andre Onana. Cameroon qualifies to the knockout stages of the Africa Cup of Nations. Meanwhile, Al Nassar is serious. They are planning an audacious bid for two big players of Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag is being called out. Welcome to the United Hot Sport. This is all Manchester United news today. My name is Webb. Have you subscribed now? Let's get into it. I'll start it off with the Africa Cup of Nations because the showman, the star man, Andre Onana, could be packing his bags out of the AFCON, not with his entire team, but by himself because we do know he doesn't enjoy and he's not used to being on the bench. Well, Onana was benched by Rigobert Song in their last group game of the Africa Cup of Nations, which they eventually won by three goals to against Namibia. Now, his cousin, Fabrice Ondoa did start in between the sticks for him. Now, here's the catch. Fabrice Ondoa plays for a third-tier club in the French in, in France. A third-tier club names is what Fabrice Ondoa plays for. But this guy benched Andre Onana and played better than him. Guys, oh my goodness, what on earth is wrong with this club? Who scouts for Manchester United? Isn't this a biting expose? of the number one shortstopper who was brought as a messiah to replace the beloved David De Gea. Man, I do. And you, you can't fault me, guys. I mean, we tried here to support our own African boy, Onana, when he joined Manchester United by boy. Isn't he such a, what, a character? He's uh, full of himself more than he is full of, of goalkeeping. And the funny thing is, even with him being benched, Onana remained Onana. He was doing Onana things. He was on the touchline, bellowing instructions like he was the coach. <laughs> Andre Onana, what a showman, Mr. Vibes. Anyway, Cameroon is through, but Onana will not take any credit for it. Perhaps the only credit he will take will be for starting on the bench and his cousin starting a third-tier team player starting ahead of him and working wonders well uh well away from uh, onana now i'll stick to him for a minute because question now is did rico Bat song do what eric ten Hag has failed to do for a long time because listen this is after only one game of him performing poor against senegal rico Bat song pulls the plug makes the tough decision like a manager is supposed to do benches onana and the result is uh, Cameroon is through to the last to, to the knockout stages of the Africa Cup of Nations. Now, ha, does Eric Ten Hag have the character, the metal to do this? Does he have it? Well, he probably doesn't. He probably doesn't. Now, away from that, uh, from Andre Onana, I'll talk about Aaron Wan Bissaka. Aaron Wan Bissaka apparently is attracting the attention of clubs from Saudi Arabia, and uh, to be precise. Al Nassar, Christian Ronaldo's Al Nassar. I told you in my video that many of you refused to enjoy and watch. It had a few views, uh, but it's okay. You know, eventually you get to know that the things I'm telling you have got credible sources and you start watching the, the videos. But anyway, so Al Nassar apparently are, are planning an audacious bid for two players, Aaron Wan Bissaka and Casemiro. The latest to join that is Casemiro. Now, Remember, Al Nassar wanted Emerson Royal from Tottenham Spurs, but their bid was rejected upon arrival by Spurs. Now, they have said, we are not going to go on and on with Daniel Levy. They have heard how bad and difficult he is. So they have decided to look to Manchester United and go for Aaron Wan Bissaka, who was recently in talks with Man United for a contract extension, which did not go well, according to reports we get. But remember, Wan Bissaka has had a contract, a one-year uh, uh, his one year uh, clause triggered in his contract, in his old contract. But uh, United, so his current stays until 2025 because we triggered a one year extension. But apparently, uh, Manchester United did not have good talks with one Bissaka on a contract extension. They didn't go well. So, what's happening is we are willing to cash in on him. Sergeant Cliff and Omar Berada are working. <laughs> They are working, and these players who are not giving us enough value will leave. Well, one Bissaka, to be honest, if we have to judge him by his last game, he was one of our best players against Tottenham. This guy just knows how to, he's a thief. He's a, he knows how to steal the ball off the feet. But anyway, so question is, how much can Al Nasser give us? For me, if I hear our players attracting attention, even if it's a flatter, attracting attention from any club in, in Saudi, I feel happy because you know what? Saudi is our closest chance to getting money to price out to, to price certain some of these players out, but also to get us out of our misery because 
They can give us 50 million, for example, for Aaron Wan Bisaka. Yes, a Saudi club like Al Nasser can give us 50 million. That's nothing. It's peanuts for them. So, I, for me, I think it could be a blessing in these guys. And if they are serious and they take, they give us that 50, even if it's 40 million pounds for Wan Bisaka, Man United, take that money and run. Take off faster than Marcus Rashford, and you know how he runs with the ball and even leaves it behind. You take it and run off with it, like you say in Bolt, because they seem to be serious. So is Casemiro. They are reportedly also interested in Casemiro, a double. So probably Cristiano Ronaldo spoke to them and told them, This is Ronaldo having the heart for Manchester United, saying, You know, they need money. Probably Sir Jim called him and told him, You know what, can you help us get some money from these Saudi guys, all rich guys who don't care about the millions and millions of pounds they have? And Cristiano Ronaldo was able to go and convince them because he thinks for them anyway. So they could as well come for Casemiro. And I know some of you will be going, we can't sell Casemiro. We can't sell Casemiro. What are you talking about? Casemiro gave us a good season last season, but this guy is aging. His best is behind him. He's even winning awards. Never expected him to win in the Golden you know, Globe Soccer Awards. We should be selling Casemiro now if the right bidder comes. So for me, Al Nasser, please be serious. Please take these players. Take them now, now, now. Like now, if we can take back time and take them yesterday, it is okay. Take these players because, man, they are not really, really giving us enough, to be honest. So that's a big one coming through from Manchester United. So that's where we are as Manchester United. Now, still talking Manchester United and this boy, Mason Greenwood. You know that here on the United of Sport, we are for the return of Mason Greenwood. But each passing day, honestly, it looks like the Spaniards want to take our boy. Now, it hurts me to say this, but reports coming through are suggesting that Barcelona are serious about taking Mason Greenwood, pricing him out of the misery he's enduring at Manchester United. And apparently... Barcelona are serious about him and he seems to be aging ever closer to crossing over to Baka. Now, I, honestly, I'm, I'm not one who gives up easily and I'm not about to give up on my hope of having Greenwood back at Manchester United with Sergio Ratcliffe on the wheel and Omar Berada coming in. But my at after thought, I low-key feel like maybe the best thing for him would be to leave Manchester United because we've treated him so bad, we've betrayed him. We don't deserve him. We don't deserve Greenwood the way we've treated him. Can he go where he will be loved? He seemed to be loved in Spain. If he can learn a little Esperanza con Nerato con Spenantes, learn a little Spanish like Si Senora, Nona. Yeah, what am I saying? Is that Spanish even? Anyway, if he can learn a little bit of Spanish and stay there and enjoy himself, let him enjoy himself because, I mean, we've been so unfair. To this boy that i'm beginning to feel like we don't deserve him the only thing we as the fans of mason greenwood and manchester united deserve is for this boy to come back make a stop and bid farewell let him not go through the back door but barcelona seem to be so serious now finally scott mctominy dropped an impressive interview and uh this interview coincides with reports suggesting that apparently Players are increasingly tired of Eric Ten Hag and his monotonous ways. Repetitive training drills every day, doing the same thing. Da, 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 da. It doesn't make sense. And, you know, if you over-repeat something, it gets boring. And people, will be, these players will be like, what's this? What's this boss doing? So there are leaks coming through from Manchester United suggesting that certain players are tired of the repetitive overdoing of the same thing by Eric Ten Hag and his methods. That's what some players are saying. These are reports, of course, I, I, I can't confirm or deny these reports, but judging by how Eric Ten Hag can be a one-trick pony, we've seen him lacking a plan B in his games, playing uh, the same system, every time playing a single pivot, even when clearly a double pivot makes better sense for United, playing Anthony day in and day out, playing Marcus Rashford even when the obvious thing was him to be benched, playing Andro Nana every day, Eric Ten Hag and repetitive for me, I don't think really surprises me. So maybe there is some truth to it. And players seem to be fed up, just like the fans are fed up of his repetitive playing of Onana, playing of Anthony, back then playing of Marcus Rashford, playing of Scott McTominay when he shouldn't. <sighs> anyway, Scott gave a good interview today that I liked. 
But I still think we can sell him, man. We should sell him. <laughs> like Onana, let me grab my bags. Where are they? And go on my private jet to my bed because it's getting late. And that's all the news concerning Man United today. My name is Web. Subscribe. See you tomorrow, fam. Cheers.